This has the proximity key system, and as you walk up to the vehicle with the key, when you get to a certain point, it's gonna sense that key and turn on these lights here on the side mirrors. And they illuminate the ground next to the vehicle, so help you navigate the ground and kind of serve as a, an approach light, basically. But there's no other lights that turn on. So we're gonna hit the unlock button now. When we hit the unlock button, once again, we have these side uh, lights, but we also have the lights here in the front, daytime running lights, uh, but no tail lights that turn on. This vehicle has a DRL off position on the headlight switch, so you can actually turn off all the exterior lights uh, and go completely dark when the vehicle's running. Now I have the parking lights on, and here in the front are these DRLs, the daytime running lights, the white strips of LEDs that are illuminated, and they're mostly bright from this angle here. They're, they're intended for other drivers to see you, basically. Uh, so it does have a nice, sharp LED and quite bright, but they're not too bright, so you're not gonna mistake these as headlights. And then there is an amber side marker here in the front, red side marker here in the back of the vehicle, and the taillights wrap around as well, kind of wrap around and look really good. So you can see them from the side and the back. Uh, they are red, the camera kind of makes them look a little orangey, but they are a deep, sharp red LED light. And they almost extend all the way across the vehicle. There's a little gap here where the badge is located. But it is a nice and sharp line. Uh, the tag lights are also illuminated and they illuminate the ground. Uh, kind of serve as an approach light a little bit. The turn signal basically takes that white light that we saw before, daytime, daytime running light, and replaces it with a very bright amber color light. So it's that exact same light. Uh, it's just brighter and changes the color to amber. There's also an amber turn signal indicator here on the side mirror. Not super bright, but it is visible from the front, the side, and the back. A little bit brighter from this angle. And then it has a red turn signal here in the back, just below that line. So it's not an amber or anything. It is a red color turn signal, but it is a completely separate light. It's not a, an existing light flashing. So let's go ahead and turn on the low beams. And we're gonna look at it going down the road. And these are auto leveling uh, headlights. So it's a multi projector system so you can see there's three right now illuminated three projectors illuminated on each side and they combine to th together and give you uh, the light on the road so it's actually six overlapping projector headlights that shine on the road and we'll see all, what it looks like going down the road it, it does do a pretty good job the cutoff is about about three feet off the ground, I'm starting to get a little bit of brightness there, but you can see it's a little bit brighter there, but as I dip down more, the full brightness is about two and a half feet off the ground. I'll return the high beams on, and the high beams turn on an additional light. Uh, so you can see that inner portion on both sides is not illuminated. You can see it right here. And it is a, an additional uh, larger projector lens right there in the center or in the middle this trunk lighting is pretty much terrible <laughs> uh, it has a very dim light here in the center right there and it illuminates just a little bit uh, it's not enough for anything uh, you can see there's dark areas all around here all the way back there's dark everywhere is dark except for this one little spot and it's not even that bright you can see my pointer is like much brighter than the actual light. Uh, you can see all this is dark since I have something there. So yeah, this is a huge weak spot in the lighting on the vehicle is the trunk light. Just absolutely disappointing. Also, it's just very frustrating to use the vehicle at nighttime. Like we're doing this video, uh, trying to get my equipment ready and everything, it is just a pain because it's just very poor lighting back here. The inside of the back door does have a puddle light. So it shines light here on the ground so you can see what you're stepping in before getting out of the vehicle. 
uh, and then it has a dark pocket, no light there, no light here. There is a little bit of a light right in here around the handle, if you can see that. And then it has illuminated buttons here on the door. The lights here in the back seat are coming from right here in the center. So there's two lights there and they kind of illuminate pretty good. Even with black interior, it does a decent job. They're bright, it's fairly bright light, so that helps out a lot. And there is some floorboard illumination as well. And there's two USB charge ports that are also illuminated. The inside of the front door also has a puddle light. So this whole area is illuminated, this is great. Uh, but it has no pocket lights or anything like that here or here, just the, the button lights and then the backlit uh, handle here. Uh, the presets are not illuminated here on the door. There is some floorboard illumination. I'll show you how to dim that if you want to dim it. It does have the ability to do that. Um, and then the lights here on the front, not quite as good, are coming here from this kind of like center bar area. Um, you can see it's a little bit dimmer here in the front than the back. Uh, and there's some, some drawbacks here we'll get to in a minute. Now I have the interior lights on, so you can see what it looks like in here. And when I shut the door, interior lights fade out, and we're left with the backlit buttons. Now it does have the floorboard illumination. Now you can adjust the brightness of this floorboard illumination uh, here on the settings on the screen. So it has illumination, and then you have lights, which is a separate setting. Uh, so you can adjust this completely uh, independently. So there's backlit buttons here on the door. Uh, the handle here has a light. You can see that slightly. To the left of the steering column is a few backlit buttons. Uh, the gauges is basically a screen, and it does have a quick access button right here to adjust the brightness. So I'm gonna cycle through here. So I'm gonna go down. So you can see, that's as low as it goes there, which is quite dim to my eyes. Uh, the camera makes it a little bit brighter. Let's bring it up. And that's the maximum brightness. So you can see it also does the backlit buttons as well. So we have a slight change in those uh, brightness settings. All right, so we're back to, back to the bright, brightest settings here. So you can see the, what the buttons on the steering wheel looks like. The center screen, uh, in addition to the, the illumination here, we do have the lights in which we can you know, do the adjustments there in the settings. Um, now it does have the, let's go to, Let's get back out of that. Display has a separate setting. So there's the, the illumination is adjustable in different, different places here. Uh, so the brightness and the contrast for the display and the camera is in a separate location. So you can adjust those. Speaking of camera, let's go ahead and turn that on. Let's go ahead and put it in reverse in a more normal uh, camera view. Let me turn the brightness down on the cameras, my camera, so you can see what it looks like. It looks pretty good. Uh, even at night, you can see it well. I have the brightness turned up on my camera because it's there's so many places in which it's just dark. Uh, so this area right here, you can see it's completely dark. Let's go ahead and turn on the interior lights here so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so this pocket right here is where you put your charge cell phone uh, charger. It's completely dark. The cup holders do have a light on, on a little bit on each side here, and it's mostly visible on this side. Uh, when I turn off the interior lights, you can see it kind of eliminates this water bottle a little bit, which is kind of neat. And the shifter is eliminated, the buttons around it are all illuminated. Uh, but this center console is completely dark. There's no lights whatsoever in this compartment. You can't even see what I'm looking at. So let me turn on the interior lights. Uh, so you can see it's just a completely dark compartment here. Uh, so no lights in this compartment at all. And surprisingly, there is a light in the glove compartment. All right, so it does have an auto dimmer of your mirror. Have these buttons here that uh, are eliminated for the home light control. And then the interior lights are controlled here. And it actually has a light 
that illuminates the button to turn on the interior lights, which is great. Uh, some vehicles fail in that regard. Uh, so you can have it turn on with the door or not. So you can turn on independent lights here, like reading lights, and they don't really blind you. They mostly, you know, shine here in your lap area, which is good. Um, and then the sunroof, uh, actually it's just the sunshade is on this vehicle is illuminated. All right, so it has a um, visor with a light here. When you open up the mirror, it turns on. Here is the pattern on some bushes, so you can get an idea what it looks like. There's the high beams, there's the low beams, and you see there's a f kind of a jagged cu uh, cutoff. Um, and part of the patchiness and the jaggedness is because it's trying to create a shadow on the oncoming lane. We'll see that when we're going down the road. When we start the vehicle, it turns on the headlights and you can see it goes up and down, just kind of testing the range of motion basically for the auto dim or the auto leveling headlights. It does have an auto dim uh, headlights for the high beams, but uh, you know, those usually don't work all that great. We'll see how it works. I got it turned on. Okay, so the auto leveling system, it doesn't like keep it perfectly level, but when you floor it and the, the front end kind of lifts up, it's supposed to keep the headlights from going too high. Um, going up and down hills, it seemed like it doesn't really do much, but right now you can see that little bit of a shadow on the oncoming lane. That cutoff is just kind of creating a little bit of a dip there um, to help out with avoiding blinding other drivers, basically, when you're going up and down bumps and hills and stuff. Um, but so far, visibility is fine at low beams. It's quite bright, and there is a, the, the cutoff is a little jagged. Uh, but other than that, it seems fine. I mean, with with those six low beam projectors, they do a pretty good job of overlapping. There's not any major patching or anything like that I can see in front of me. Now these headlights kind of remind me of the Lexus uh, style headlights, which is pretty good. Pretty good headlights. Very impressive. Now the Acura also has a multiple projector system that's really good as well. Okay, so there's the high beams and yeah, these are great. These are really good headlights. High beams, no problem. I can see at a good distance, I can see the trees, I can see the sides of the road. Uh, the, the, the road itself is illuminated. Uh, yeah, just it does a good job. The distance is great. Even at low beams, they work really good. All right, so there's, yeah, look at that. Hopefully you can see that. That is really, really good uh, high beams. It's it's in the in the good category for me for sure, uh, very very impressive. Now the automatic high beams seem to be working okay, but usually I, I don't have my hopes up for those. They they tend to cause problems. So a lot of times I turn them off, but depending on what I'm doing. So the auto leveling system, let's go ahead and turn off the automatic high beams. There's nobody behind me right now. All right, so we can see that cutoff. Yeah, you can see when I'm, the front end lifts up, then that line kind of lowers, uh, but it kind of waits for you to lift up quite a bit, then it lowers. Um, so that's what that, that's really all that auto leveling system does. It doesn't really, keep you level all the time. It's only when you're really flooring it and you lift the front end up, uh, it'll kind of push it, push those headlights back down a little bit. Um, but, you know, that's good that it does it, but it's not like a 
It's not like a system that's going to keep the headlights level all the time because you can see them bouncing up and down. 